The third argument for the existence of God is, in a way, very simple and also very abstract. It's sometimes called the argument from contingency. And uh, it, there are different ways to interpret Aquinas on this topic, but the, the fundamental form of the argument runs like this. In the world around us, we see that there are things that are contingent because they can be or not be. Anything that can be or not be does not have necessity of itself, but only exists because it's in some way caused by another. Can there be a world only of contingent things and not a world in which something is necessary? Well, Aquinas argues that it cannot be the case. If everything that exists in the world right now is contingent, then it doesn't have its explanation only from itself, but in reference to another, and yet we can't just have an infinite series of such causes. Now Aquinas does sometimes introduce a kind of chronological argument here and say, if you have a collection of contingent realities alone that compose the whole universe, then the whole universe is itself contingent, because everything in it is contingent, and so it's possible in principle for the universe to not exist. Well, that's to say, for everything in the world that's contingent to go out of existence. So it would be strange to argue that the universe is eternal, that it's always endured, because if the universe is always endured as a series of purely contingent things over an infinite time, it would be the case that everything would give out at some point in time, and so nothing would exist. But if nothing had come to exist, then nothing would come to exist afterwards, and so there would be nothing now. It doesn't make much sense then to posit an infinitely enduring, eternal universe of purely contingent things. You need to posit something immaterial and necessary that exists that gives rise to the contingent things. You don't have to pass through the contingent to the temporality aspect of this argument to make it work. You can just say everything that can be or cannot be depends upon something that gives it being, and you can't just have an infinite series of such contingent beings that can be or not be. There has to be something that exists by necessity as the condition of possibility for the things that exist uh, contingently. It is also true that Aquinas, when he thinks about things that exist necessarily, thinks about immaterial realities that are created as necessary realities. So, for example, Aquinas believes that the spiritual soul in the human person exists after death and continues to exist by a kind of necessity. It's not purely contingent. It doesn't just go out of existence after death. And likewise, he thinks that, that angels exist, that he believes in this because of divine revelation. But he thinks that there's a certain intelligibility to thinking about God, who's himself spiritual creator, creating a world of pure spirits, of created intellects with free will that are not embodied, immaterial spiritual angels. And these, he says, exist by necessity. That's to say they're not contingent. They don't come into being and go out. They don't go out of being once they exist. They're pure, spirit, pure spirits. But he says you can have necessary beings that are caused so the third way is really arguing that there must be necessary beings that can't just be contingent beings. But then he also thinks that if there are necessary beings that are immaterial, like souls and angels, those still have a kind of, we could say today, modality to them, in that they depend upon some agent that gives them existence or being beyond the uh, fluctuations of existence. And that being has existence by necessity in the strongest sense possible and gives everything else its existence.